Because as everyone should know, my entire personality is just eyeliner. Just eyeliner. Just eyeliner. Hello my dolly dearies and welcome to another video. Now of course it is October, time for all things spooky, scary and magnificent. And my upload schedule this year has been kind enough to bless me with the chance to make two Halloween videos this year. For the first one we're going to be doing something a bit on the cuter side. I'm going to be making a Halloween magical girl to accompany our magical boy and girl for Valentine's Day and Summer respectively. This should be a pretty fun project and a nice precursor to the spooky season. Also, don't forget to go and check out my Redbubble since I've got one of those now, link in the description below. But without any further ado, let's get on with the video. For this doll, I will be using a Dracula as a base. I feel her cute pink skin will be absolutely perfect. Now, this doll I do have a concept for, which is quite rare. Back at Christmas last year, I was listening to Halloween songs, as you do, and came up with this design, which is what we're going to be trying to do for this doll. So we can remove her head by heating up her neck using our hair dryers so that the head pops off nice and easily to not break the neck peg. Next, we can take a pair of sharp scissors to clip her hair as close to the head as possible. This is so that there'll be a lot less to pull out when we scrape the pliers around the inside of her head, so try to get it as close to the scalp as possible. Unfortunately, this hair is beyond saving due to how gunky it is. But with that all thrown in the bin, we can take our pair of needle nose pliers and scrape them around the inside of the scalp to loosen up all of their little hair plugs and pull them out through the neck hole. This doll was really gunky, and I don't know why I've been getting so many gunky dolls recently. Um, science side of YouTube, tell me what is happening in the comments section below because it's confusing me. There were just these huge yellow clumps of glue and it was disgusting and I need to wash my pliers. Like, the hair would stick to my hand if I put my hand upside down. So let's throw that in the bin. And we can also throw her head away for now, because we don't need it right now. To make her suitably short compared to the rest of the magical characters, we'll be sawing her body into many different pieces to take out as much of her height as possible. With her sword into all of these pieces, we can see exactly how short she is when compared to a regular monster high doll. We've taken out a considerable amount of her height, which is perfect. To start putting her back together, I hot glue a wire down the middle. Here you can see me trying to hold it in the right place as the hot glue is drying. Now, in this process her arms snapped clean off, which is so frustrating. So fearing the worst, I put in a small hook with a metal eye through the hand so that we could reattach it by stringing it off the other arm and removing the other arm. But wait a minute, I have had a thought, a very rare occurrence I know. What if I drill a hole through her, and instead of suspending her arm's elastic on the other arm, I suspend it through the post in the middle? This idea, if it didn't work, wouldn't do too much harm in the long run, so I'm going to give it a shot. If I can drill a hole through her. So back to more rudimentary methods, I tape her down to the table. I do amuse myself sometimes. But with that successfully drilled, I attach a small length of elastic to the loop in her arm, hooking it across the wire post which I stab through the middle of her body. I add a bit of hot glue to help give the arm some sturdiness around the hole, and for the most part it stays in place pretty well. It's a bit wobbly if you shake her around too much, but it stays in place for the most part, and with clothes on it should be fine. Now to fill up all the gaps with my trusty epoxy sculpt. Taking two parts, I mix them in A and B equally until they're a uniform colour. I'm starting to notice how low my epoxy sculpt is getting. I have got some new stuff, but this stuff has lasted me a good four years, which is absolutely insane. 
So taking my epoxy sculpt and some sculpting tools, I pack it into all of the body modifications and use it to cover up the holes where I drilled and all of the wires and make her a bit more sturdy. Her body modifications aren't 100% perfect. They're a bit lumpy and a bit splotchy and we're gonna try and fix that a bit with sanding. To do this, I take a Dremel and take it to all of the lumpiest parts. I'm not too worried about sanding any further because she's going to be hidden under an immense amount of clothes with stockings and poopy stuff and also just look at how short she is. So it doesn't really matter, but I'm still going to paint her. And we can remove her face as well. To do this, take some 100% acetone on a rag and press it to her face. Let's see if we can get the whole thing off in one go. Can we do it? Is it going to work? Will our face be left a clean slate after this single wipe? Oh, not quite, but pretty close. And I always think it's quite funny to see their face on the rag. It looks really silly to me. But with her face removed, we can get on to painting. I mix a pink which is close to her skin and use it to cover up all of the body modifications. Now onto her face. I start with blushing her eye sockets in purple and magenta. Due to the original concept of her, which has now changed as I've made up an entire universe for all my magical girl characters that I'm never ever gonna get around to making, her original concept was that she was escaped from a video game and was murderous magical girl gone rogue. And I wanted to keep some of that visible in her design. Keeping her face style to very simple rudimentary shapes, nothing too complex, so no immense amounts of shading, nothing insane. I dot on some thick bulky eyebrows with the purple pastel. Since we're keeping the face up simple, I can start with pencils, taking pastels entirely out of the equation. Taking a pink pencil, which is close to the skin tone, I begin to sketch out the base of the eye shape, following the eye mold. I wanted to have her looking slightly to the side, so I sketch out her eyes accordingly. Going in with a magenta pencil to darken the eye line and add in some eye creases at the same time. I also use it to start blocking in the shape of her eyebrows. I start building up a base colour for her eyes, originally wanting them to both be a uniform purpley pink. I also go in with a red pink pencil to add some lines and depth to her lips. With the first layer sealed in with Mr. Super Clear Sealant, we can go in adding more details again, taking more dark pink and red pencils to darken her eye line, white pencils to brighten the whites of her eyes, and more pinks and reds to add depth to her lips. I also started adding colour to their eyes, which at first I wanted to both be a uniform purple, but I decided against later as you will see. And we can go with our black pencil to add some striking, iconic Sky the Golden eyeliner. Keeping to the video game and simplistic theme, she's not going to have any eyelashes. To get a super fine line, I take my paintbrush and pick up black pigment straight from the brush to use for eyeliner. Since she has no eyelashes to disguise any imperfections I might make in the eyeliner, I have to make sure that it's completely perfect. My eyeliner skills on myself have been getting better, so I'm hoping that carries over to my dolls. Because as everyone should know, my entire personality is just eyeliner. Just eyeliner. Just eyeliner. <laughs> Taking the same technique and lifting white pigment from my white pencil with a dampened brush, I brighten the whites of her eyes even more. I 
Again, refining the eyeliner on top as some of the white has accidentally bled over. Taking my fine paintbrush as well, I also start adding a bit of a gradient to her eyebrows. To darken this, because using a paintbrush was not doing enough, I go in with pencils, black and purple, to add a stronger gradient and more reference to her hair, which will be purple when we add it. Due to the detail and not wanting to have much of it, I do not feather out the eyebrows and just blend in a gradient. Now we can start on our eyes. I decided against doing purple and decided to instead make them opposite Halloween colours of orange and purple. With the iris of each being a different colour to the other, so the orange eye would have a purple iris and the purple eye would have an orange iris. I will also be covering this in glitter because I want her to be the cute side of Halloween. So I'm just focusing on getting everything underneath the glitter looking perfect because that will show through with the glitter. So instead of adding detail to the eye, I just go back and forth, back and forth, making sure that they look absolutely perfect. With it looking pretty spot on, I decide that I'm also going to add a small dot of green to the centre of the iris. This will be the same on both to help tie them together and incorporate even more spooky colours. I also tried adding a ring of green around the outside of the eye, but it didn't work great so I immediately went over it with my orange and purple paints respectively. Neatening up the eyeliner, which had got slightly ruined in the process, she's looking pretty cute, and taking some white gouache, I can dot in her eye highlights. I also take white gouache to slightly enhance her maiden's bow and some highlights. And with the glitter added, she just looks really stunning, doesn't she? But with her face done, we can get on to the next logical step the hair. Sorry for changing tables again. Bugs have yet again overtaken my primary table. Bugs, please leave me alone, I don't like you. But for her hair, we've got two colours of purple to choose from. Away with the light purple because we're feeling extra emo and gothic this month. To make sure all of the hair is the same length, I take it and I wrap the yarn around a notebook. I then slip knot all of the pieces over another piece of yarn. I also incorporate some white which I will be dyeing orange later and I shall show you how, and some of the light purple because I decided that I wanted to add some extra highlights. With everything brushed out and looking suitably fluffy and squishy and an obscene amount of fluff from this hair in my bin, oh my god, it is perfect for it to be ironed out. Taking my hair straightener, I can pass it slowly over the yarn hair to heat up the fibres and make them all really nice and silky smooth. On the purple hair, it looked a lot smoother. There must be some difference between the acrylic yarns which makes some of them way shinier than the others and I'm still waiting to find the brand which is 100% super silky, super shiny perfect. But with all of the hair ironed out, we're going to snip away the white so that we can dye it orange. With the white separated, I glue it onto some tin foil, and I take a permanent marker to scribble in the hair. This will actually dye it because the permanent marker takes to the fibres and, well, permanently dyes them. This is perfect, and I make sure to scribble on tin foil because then not as much will go into paper behind and it works a lot better. I scribble in both sides and try to get every single bit of the hair covered in orange, and it looks pretty good but it is a bit crusty and it does leak some colour, so we're gonna get rid of it doing that. To do this, 
Chuck it in your sink and wash it with a bunch of shampoo or body wash until the water runs clear from it instead of whatever color you dyed it. But now we can get onto our hair. Being too lazy to make wefts, we're just going to be gluing the hair straight onto the head. I start with the pale purple highlights, gluing them in for the start of her fringe and across the back of her head. I wanted to keep the orange highlights only to the top of her head so they will not be featuring in the first half of this. I take the strands and I smooth them onto the head with my thumb. With all of her hair glued in place, we can now get onto her outfit. For her leggings, I thought it would be really cute to use this lace stuff, and I thought it looked really nice with the pattern and very in her style. Now, unfortunately, due to my thick leg modifications, and the fact that this lace does not have very much pull, these are permanently stuck on her legs, so she's stuck looking permanently fashionable. And using some patterns from the Moonlight Jewel Sewing Book, if you haven't picked it up already, I highly recommend you do. I use it infinitely just for this skirt pattern. We can get started with her skirt. I use a crushed velvet fabric and across the bottom, I sew this metallic orange ribbon. It was a pain to ruffle because it just kept on springing out of place and just sew in place, but it, we got there in the end. I also sew a top out of crushed velvet, not checking any of the ends with fray checks that it frays out and looks nice and poofy. And oh my god, I love her. The poof of the velvet is just so adorable. And for an extra detail, we can also paint her nails black using some nail polish. It's so cute. I love the oversized sleeves due to me not altering the pattern because of the smaller body type, and it looks really sweet. But now onto her shoes. I take these old Frankie Stein boots and chop off the bolts at the back. And since we're getting the paints out, we're also going to be making her lollipop staff. I make a little lollipop out of some air dry clay. Uh, it's a lot smaller than I anticipated it would be because air dry clay is surprisingly heavy and I want her to be able to hold it. But I paint the shoes in Halloween colors with a typical amount of glitter as is required on a Sky the Golden Doll and they look pretty sweet. And I paint the lollipop in Halloween colors as well. I then cover the handle of the staff in some green ribbon and add a suitably oversized pumpkin orange bow. But as is my design, we're going to be adding some blood splatters. So let's go outside. So I've taken it outside so that I don't get paint everywhere. I've got my paint and a paintbrush and she's just gonna... Okay, let's try. <laughs> Okay, let's try again. Oh, we're getting there. This, this might take some time. And with her blood splattered lollipop, she's done. She's just adorable, isn't she? 
I decided to name her Minerva, which I feel is a suitably mysterious and spooky name, and completely hilarious with this little poof ball. She was so fun to make and everything, it turned out a bit simpler than my design, but I love how she turned out so much. She's so cute and poofy and looks like a little fuzzball. I'm so happy with how she turned out, and it's a great start to the spooky season. But not quite spooky enough for my liking, so there will be another Halloween video coming your way later this month. As always guys, thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video, and maybe even share with a friend. And I shall see you all in the next one. Bye!